Hello and welcome to tonight's book reading session of Preparing for the Day After, a picture e-book. Preparing for the Day After is a photojournalistic treatise on disaster mitigation published by me, Malini Shankar and Walter Keller for the 10th anniversary of the Asian Tsunami. Tonight we will learn about more about media guidelines, especially focusing on reporting on child's, children's welfare in part 2 of chapter 18. But let us first recap what we have learned in the previous book reading session. Water and sanitation is central to developmental discourse. Culture sensitive food security also has evolved out of local agrometeorological conditions prevalent in an area. <clears throat> Livelihoods based on local agrometeorological conditions are the best means of ensuring livelihood security. Climate change adaptation, menstrual hygiene, especially for indigenous tribal women, solid waste management, universal health care access, sustainable development goals, they are all factors to be included in the development agenda. Media personnel have to be trained in reporting disaster preparedness or the lack of it at district level. Disaster is the impact of a calamity on the human landscape. This includes the impact on lives, livelihoods, livestock and landscape. Tonight we will start again uh, with part 2 of chapter 18 on media guidelines for disaster reporting and child, children's welfare. In the previous episode, we have learned about an over-enthusiastic reporter in Himachal Pradesh who forecast nothing less than a volcanic eruption in Himachal Pradesh. The Himachal instance is a result of electric short-circuiting, literally getting grounded to the soil. The news says that an electric pole became very hot. This was enough for me, says Dr. Arun Bhapat, uh, to conclude the electrical con connection. Not surprisingly, no report of the Geological Survey of India regarding magmatic flow in Himachal Pradesh was carried either in local media or the BBC monitoring or national media in India. The Himachal instance is a result of electrical short-circuiting, literally getting grounded to the soil. The news says that an electrical pole became very hot. This was enough for me to conclude the electrical connection. Not surprisingly, no report of the Geological Survey of India regarding magmatic flow in Himachal Pradesh was carried either in local media or BBC monitoring or national media. During February 2005, says Dr. Bapat, when I was in the Andamans, I got a telephone call from the Gujarat government informing me that a volcano had erupted in Rajkot district. The press gave disproportionately amplified coverage saying that after earthquake, Gujarat would be hit by a volcano. Before reaching Ahmedabad, I told them to get tested the so-called volcanic sample. The tests and a learned professor told them that it was a case of recent volcanism. I reached Rajkot and the village Chid Chibada. The Sabhapati of the Gram Panchayat and large population reached the site. They showed me the mouth of the volcano which, I, which was just 7 centimeters in diameter. I saw it and found that there was high tension electric cable of 11 kilo volt. The cable had several joints. I immediately inferred that it was a case of bijli chori or pilferage of power supply. The villagers were tapping electricity by fixing hooks. When such acts are performed, the diameter of the cable reduces and it breaks. When the wire breaks and the falls on the ground, the rock or the soil melts. The Palanpur in Himachal Pradesh incident reports that an electric pole turned hot. When heat reaches the ground or the rock, it is fractured and the rock, fragile rock melts. The size of the so-called magmatic melt is hardly 10 to 15 centimeters. There was a similar case in Pune district about two years ago. There, there are about four cases of the so-called volcanic eruptions within 20 kilometers of the Kudankulam atomic power project. The opponents of the nuclear power plant have sent their report and were saying proof of volcano. Dr. Bapat continues, reporters writing about disasters are courteous, gentle and good at conversation but most of them ask irrelevant questions as directed by their head office without any knowledge of disasters reporting on such issues would be twice as dangerous hypothetically speaking if there had been an ignorant ignorant stringer or a reporter in campbell bay the day of the asian tsunami and had he or she asked the incumbent assistant commissioner who had ordered all bottled water into the, in the island to be brought into the residence of the assistant commissioner as to why this had been done, the tragic comic situation would have lampooned itself in copy the next day. Facing foolish questions amongst uh, from uninformed reporters is very challenging for disaster managers. They should have some good knowledge of the disasters, Dr. Barpert adds. Secondly, the competition amongst TV reporters is much too disgusting. Dr. Barbert added in an exclusive interview to me given for this book. I must add that it's, it is not always the reporter who is foolish. What about this ignoramus of a public servant in Campbell Bay who could only think of his own survival in Campbell Bay that day? Dr. Barbert continues, 
Training is all too necessary for disaster reporters. For example, they often come up with wrong usage of the term. I have often been asked by reporters that there was an earthquake in many places. What they mean is the tremors were felt in many places. The reporters do not use this precise phrase called the tremors, tremors were felt in many places. Instead, they say the earthquake happened in so many places, which is wrong. It is important for reporters, reporters to use to know and use the precise technical terms and phrases. Typhoons batter East Asia from July to October every year. <clears throat> The monsoon months around the Indian Ocean pummel the Indian Ocean rim stays from April to October. El Nino Southern Oscillation once every few years leave the agricultural community pell-mell in the Indian Ocean rim country. El Nino Southern oscilla Oscillation has other consequences like bleak fishing, fish kills, fish deaths, currents changing course, unseasonal weather, accentuated weather related hazards like droughts and floods, as well as washed out winters and summers. With enough empowerment in the form of knowledge, we can anticipate the weather patterns and prepare literally for a rainy day. Hence, the significance of informed media personnel cannot be overemphasized. Mr. Muruli Kunduru of Plan India, an NGO working in disaster mitigation made available to, to me exclusively for, the, for this book, guidelines drawn up for media professionals professionals reporting on children in disasters. It is not easy for, for even a seasoned reporter to be abreast of global scale of developments in all spheres of earth sciences. Thousands of journalists have dedicated their skills and attention to climate change issues, which is the single largest challenge of confronting humanity on a global scale in today's wired world. Sifting through the context itself is a task. For the local impacts of climate change to be juxtaposed for a global readership or a television audience, it is not easy either in terms of research, reportage, management, etc. It emphasizes the need for training and refresher courses for media personnel and administrators. Mr. Ray Kancharla of Children's SOS says, while reporting about children afflicted by disasters, it is essential to protect the privacy and other rights of children. For example, he says, never portray a child as a singular object in a picture which is why I have shown you that that is the wrong thing to do. There are, now I am going to read to you a whole set of guidelines regarding reporting on children. Guidelines to the media, Plan India's Child Protection Policy for Media and Media Preparedness or Media Guidelines. Introduction. Plan is a child-centered community development organization and exists to support children, their families and communities in their development efforts. Plan's works therefore often mean that adults are in direct contact with children. Thus, we have policies and systems so that abuse is not perpetrated or compounded by anyone that interacts with children via plan. These measures also protect visitors from actions that could be misconstrued and lead to false accusations. Plan India considers child abuse unacceptable in all circumstances and is committed to ensuring that all possible and necessary steps are taken to protect the rights of children and ensure the well-being of all children. Visits to communities are great opportunities to see and introduce development works. However, this may pose risks towards the children plan is supporting. Therefore, Plan India formed the child protection policy in order to keep our children safe, but at the same time help both supporters and children enjoy uh, this wonderful moment. What is child abuse? Child abuse occurs when a child experiences harm, usually as a result of failure on the part of the parent or the carer to ensure a reasonable standard of care and protection. Child abuse can be physical, emotional and or sexual. Abuse can also include neglect, exploitation and harassing behavior like bullying. What is child protection? Child protection involves keeping children safe from the risk of harm caused by sexual, physical, emotional abuse, exploitation or neglect. How plan works to protect children? The UN Convention on the Rights of Child is universally identified as the basis for child protection. The convention establishes a universal duty of care that is owed to children and young people. Plan's child protection policy makes it clear that all children have equal rights to protection. The protection of children can be achieved by providing a safe, open and honest environment that protects children as well as the people working with children. Communication and child protection. Me media communication is a wonderful opportunity to share Plan, Plan India's work. To protect both good intentioned journalists and children, journalists should inform Plan India in advance before interviewing children. Visitors should not exchange contact details with any child while visiting. Responsible behavior. This behavioral protocol is re designed to protect children but also in intended to minimize the risk that visitors from incorrectly 
accused of inappropriate behavior or abuse child protection statement states i will never request a spontaneous visit via plan india office to any child never use language make suggestion or offer advice that is inappropriate offensive or abusive never behave physically in a manner which is inappropriate or sexually pro provocative never do things for children of a personal nature that they can do for themselves never condone or participate in behavior of children which is illegal unsafe or abusive never condone or participate in behavior of children which is illegal unsafe or abusive never act in ways intended to shame humiliate belittle or degrade children or otherwise perpetrate any form of emotional abuse never discriminate against show differential treatment or favor particular children to the exclusion of others never develop physical sexual relationship with any child and or children never develop relationships with children that could in any way be deemed exploitative or abusive never spend time alone with children away from others never fondle hold kiss hug or touch children in culturally insensitive way never remove a child from its community even if they have consented never exchange personal contact details with children their family or other community members never offer for children to visit any residence never offer for children to visit my residence and or my country never introduce other visitors to the community without receiving prior clearance for their presence never return to the community without going through the standard visit procedures with plan staff note it is important to note that where possible and practical at least two adults preferably including a female and a male must supervise all activities where children are involved and are present at all times if this is not possible staff and volunteers are encouraged to look for alternatives such as being accompanied by community members on visits to children all plan staff and community are trained on child protection so visiting journalists should check with plan staff in any situation where they are uncertain of what behavior is appropriate or if they want to report a concern related to photographs and videographs and other images i will always obtain the consent of the child and his or her parents or guardians before taking any photographs take and use photographs and image of children that are dignified and respectful and that do not represent them as victims image will not depict children in a vulnerable or submissive suggestive way ensure that children should be adequately clothed in photographs and not in poses that could miss that could be misinterpreted as sexually suggestive protect the safety and privacy of children and their families by not using their full names not using their images on the internet without explicit consent and not using them in any way in in which their location could be identified or their confidentiality or dignity could be breached not use photographs i take of children and plan assisted communities to benefit financially the photographs i take during my visit will be used for media purposes as a journalist only to ensure children's privacy is protected i will send the articles i wrote and or photographs i took concerning plan and children of plan india's pr team cut retake to ensure children's privacy is protected i will send the articles i wrote and or photographs i took concerning plan and the children to plan india's pr team for confirmation before it or they is or are released otherwise i will take the full responsibility of any information if any information was accused of being reported wrongly and plan india holds the right to apply to the court signatures from the media plan staff plan partner staff i say no to child abuse i have read understood and will abide by the child protection policy media with visitor name and publication signature country staff state date plan staff to be it has to be countersigned by the plan staff a consent form for plan india's partner organization i as the representative of the organization acknowledge the responsibility as a partner with plan india to facilitate the visit of media representatives to interview children children's parents guardians visitors and employees of this organization who participate in our interventions as agreed in the project agreement signed between plan india and the partner organization i acknowledge as the representative the responsibility to explain to the involved people mentioned above the purposes approaches and procedures to be used by the end of my explanation the participants understood that the information from this interaction may be used for publicity purposes in national and international newspapers books websites and or on radio and television 
Jackson Station. They should understand that during the interview, Plan India's officers may use recorders, cameras and video cameras. During the interview, participants should be aware that they have the right to stop the interview anytime when they feel uncomfortable, to insist on anonymity, to see the information derived from the interview before it appears in public, and to have copies of the final materials which may be used for the public. By this agreement, I as a representative of the organization confirm the confidentiality of the information, which includes quotes, photography, film and other materials derived from the interviews and activities. This information should not be used or shared with any third party uh, without the consent from each individual participant and from Plan India. I confirm that I will facilitate the process so that Plan India can obtain real information on our interventions for the benefit of children. I believe the information given to be correct to the best of my knowledge, name of the organization, name of the signature of the representative, name and signature of the representative, date. A consent for a form for children should include, please stick on the symbols a media visitor or visitors from Plan India come to talk with me. I feel to like talking to them they will ask me if they will ask me about my life and my ideas i feel like telling them about these things they will spend time as much as two to three hours talking to me i feel like i feel like spending time with them to talk to them if it is too long for me i might ask them to go if i can ask them for time to go and play outside with friends or have a rest time to take a break they will record my conversation on tape recorder and cameras I have no objection or objection to have my face on books and television. But if I do not want others to know my name, I can say I do not tell my name. I feel that my name can be hidden. They will also ask and talk to my parents, guardians, teachers and friends. What do I feel about that? They said they already asked my permission from my parents, guardian to talk with me. And how do I feel about that? They, that they have done this. That is taking permission, I suppose. They promise to let me have copies of any book and film that have my face on. How do I feel about that? I have to fill it in. These are, there are, you know, blanks, fill up the blanks kind of thing, which the child has to, or the child's guardian or representative has to fill in according to the tunes and what the child is feeling about it. Now, consent form for parent guardian on the child's interview. I give permission for my child or children to be interviewed by media visitors from Plan India about the child's life. I have received a full explanation from Plan India of what this interview means and the responsibilities of participation. I grant permission to Plan India to interview, photograph and or film my child and to use the information, photographs and films for the purpose of publicity, for example, in the organizational reports, books, national and international newspapers, websites, radios and television. I understand that if at any time I'm not happy with my child being interviewed or with resulting publicity, I may withdraw my child's permission uh, for the interview or request the withdrawal of future appearances on any publicity material after the, my change of decision. I certify that I am the parent or the guardian of the child and name, signature, etc. So reporting during disasters, do's and don'ts. Now we finish with child protection guidelines. Uh, reporting during disasters, do's and don'ts, training in uh, technique, group work, discussion resources required, flip charts, bold markers, whiteboard, pen, paper, discuss with trainees what they think a reporter should do when he is assigned to cover a disaster, prompt them to talk about the media's possible role during the disasters and then make teams and sub teams depending upon group dynamics of trainees and ask each team to come out with suggested action by a reporter during disaster. Media checklist on what should be asked when a disaster happens. Generic questions, questions about structural elements, questions about non-structural elements, questions about preparedness measures, economic questions, recovery questions, responsibility and accountability questions. Let trainees prepare exhaustive lists for the above mentioned. Once that is done, use flip charts prepared by trainees and discuss. At the end, give them tips for interviewing the affected for covering trauma traumatic events. The source for this is the Reporting Disaster and Disaster Preparedness, a training handbook. It is as a tribute to the ultimate sacrifice of the victims of the natural disasters of the last decade, including 2,27,898 victims of the Asian tsunami and the 230,000 victims of the Haiti earthquake and to 20,352 victims of the Japanese tsunami that media's growth in disaster reporting has to be seen in the light of. It is 
it is this acknowledgement that is the high point of preparing for the day after a book that is part of a multimedia tribute and that is all for tonight we have finished chapter 18 chapter 18 part 2 was all about media guidelines for disaster preparedness and reporting and ch children's welfare for child welfare reporting next week i will start with chapter with the chapter on early warning that is also extremely interesting and it has a lot of uh, technological applications etc et a very technological perspective um, on saturday 5th of february i hope to be there for the live interaction from 7 30 but i may be a little late because i have an online meeting at seven o'clock until then you please go through this video and come up with some good questions let's have an interesting interesting interaction say from 8 pm on saturday evening uh, 5th of february uh, not the 7 30 pm the usual time i shall see you then at the live interaction starting 8 pm on saturday 5th of february 2020 that is all for tonight take care keep smiling stay home stay safe and do subscribe to our, our, our youtube channel so much thank you so much take care bye